This is KGW News at Sunrise. We are following a number of mailbox break-ins that have some voters on edge. But elections officials have safeguards to make sure your vote is protected. Sticking with the topic of election ballots, we're also taking a closer look at Oregon Ballot Measure 109. This is the measure dealing with whether or not to legalize psychedelic mushrooms for mental health therapy. And we're also covering this story. And if we could open under phase one, you know, we, we have a chance. Neighborhood movie theaters in the metro area have been closed since March, and independent owners say they can't reopen soon. If they can't, they may have to shut down for good. We talked to the folks at Cinema 21, also the Hollywood Theater. That's coming up later this morning. But first, we want to say a big good Tuesday morning to everybody who's watching early. Rodney Hill, what do you got for us weather-wise this morning? Not like yesterday, good visibility coming into town this morning, uh, 50 degrees out at the airport. Some of you are in the 40s. Generally, it's a little bit cooler than it was 24 hours ago. Good morning, Hillsboro, 48 is your number. Good morning, Salem, you are at 47 degrees. Generally speaking, cloudy skies, the ongoing chance like yesterday over those spritzy showers, 57 at noon. I think we will get up to about 61 for an afternoon high temperature. All right, Rod, thank you very much. We start our news coverage this hour with this live look at the White House in Washington, D.C. We now stand exactly two weeks away from Election Day, and already 30 million Americans have cast their ballots. Here in the Portland metro area, the numbers are way up from four years ago in terms of early voter turnout. And we've also heard a lot of talk the past few weeks about the security of our ballots. Mailbox break-ins are part of that story. In the Hillsdale neighborhood of Southwest Portland, we spoke with a woman who says someone stole her election ballot and left everything else in her mailbox. She also says that the same thing happened to two of her neighbors. So she says they all waited until Sunday to check their mail, while other people in that same neighborhood who checked their mail on Saturday did find their ballots in their box. I would just really encourage people to don't be lazy, go get your mail. Um, and we might be looking into a locked mailbox in the future. Thing that shouldn't have been complicated and now it's complicated. In Camas, police say someone broke four or broke into that is four community mailboxes. Again, this is the Prune Hill area of Camas and they found up uh, neighbors there wound up finding piles of mail on the side of the road. In those piles, nine election ballots. All nine were brought back to their owners. Now we should also point out in this story, Camas police have already come out and said they don't think this case of mail theft was politically motivated. Here in Oregon, meanwhile, there are safeguards in place in the event that someone did actually try to vote with a stolen ballot. So for starters, each ballot has a unique barcode on it. If you request a new ballot because yours was stolen or it never arrived, that old barcode becomes invalid. In other words, it can no longer count as an election ballot. Also, election officials double check the signature on the envelope to make sure it matches your voter registration. They take that signature seriously. They actually go through a three step verification process. So one step involves a computer and then two actual people review those signatures as well. Police in Washington are stepping up efforts to patrol and protect ballot drop off boxes. Vancouver police says it's doing this to deter possible voter intimidation or ballot box tampering. They also say they're going to monitor about a dozen boxes around the city through election day. And if they notice anything that's out of place, officers will let Clark County officials know about it. So if you notice anything wrong, Clark County is asking you to let them know by calling 311. Voters here in Oregon, Brenda, have several ballot measures to weigh in on this month. So this morning we're going to take a closer look at one and it's measure 109. Yeah, it involves legalizing psychedelic mushrooms for therapy. Morgan Romero explains. Oregonians, you have a chance to vote on a first of its kind ballot measure, measure 109. If passed, Oregon would be the first state to legalize psilocybin for mental health therapy. What exactly is psilocybin? It comes from a group of fungi. You may know them as magic mushrooms, shrooms, boomers, champignones. Psilocybin is considered a psychedelic drug that causes changes in perception, mood, and cognitive processes. According to the FDA, preliminary evidence shows psilocybin could help people with severe treatment-resistant depression. Measure 109 would change state law to allow supervised licensed facilities to manufacture, deliver, and administer psilocybin. Right now, doing any of the above is against the law. 
The initiative says OHA would set up and enforce a regulated psilocybin services program. The program would need to have a two-year development period. If passed, the measure states psilocybin could only be used for, quote, psilocybin services by a licensed, quote, facilitator to a, quote, qualified client. Huh? Let's back up and look at what exactly the people who drafted this mean. Psilocybin services means services before, during, and after someone takes a psilocybin product. A facilitator is someone with a license from Oregon Health Authority who provides or oversees psilocybin services. Qualified clients are people who are 21 and up who a facilitator thinks should use the drug. The initiative says OHA may not require people to have any specific medical condition in order to get treatment. The measure requires a 15% retail sales tax go toward enforcement and taxing systems and an administration fund. It also requires an advisory board. While the program is in the development phase, the measure's sponsors think about $5.4 million of general fund money will be needed to kick it off. They also say during that time, OHA should find and share medical, psychological, and scientific studies on psilocybin treatment for mental illness. That was Morgan Romero reporting for us this morning. And if you haven't marked your ballot yet, or if you're undecided on the candidates or certain issues, we have a voter guide with all the information you need to make an informed decision. You can find it on KGW.com. And once you either mail in your ballot or drop it at a drop box, we've made it easy for you to track. Just text the word ballot to 503-226-5088. We'll send you back a link to the site where you can check and see when your ballot has been received and count it. In other local news this morning, we're hearing from the family of a man who was killed Saturday night in a shooting in Clark County. So this happened near Amboy. The family of Daniel Thwaite says he was out driving with some friends when they passed someone who they say was shooting a gun too close to the road. They say Daniel stopped to confront the shooter and that's when he was shot several times. He wound up dying a short time later. The shooter has already been identified as 32 year old Cody Nutter. His attorney told the Columbia newspaper this is a case of self defense, but Daniel's family isn't buying it. When SWAT kicked his door down at 4 a.m. Sunday morning, when they finally found him, they found a burn barrel in his living room with things in it. It's, this is not self-defense. We need justice. The family needs justice. Daniel leaves behind four kids between the ages of 10 and 16. A GoFundMe has been established to help those kids and cover his funeral expenses. We have a link on our website, kgw.com. At 8 o'clock this morning, a new FEMA site is opening in Estacada to help wildfire victims in Clackamas County. It's located at City Hall. Staff will be there to help people apply for assistance. FEMA also has sites in Medford, Eugene, Staten, and Lincoln City. Almost 20,000 Oregonians have applied for disaster relief. So far, FEMA has given out $20 million. It's 5.08 this morning. We want to check in with Rod on this Tuesday. I hear that you have your eye on some freezing temperatures. I do. So it's the first time this fall season that I'm watching the big batch of purple air. Talking about this cold air up here showing up on this air mass uh, map that we show you generally only in the winter time, right? So here it is Sunday morning. Notice how this, this is a large air mass of Canadian air coming down. The cold core comes all the way down into Denver. And notice how it slices into the gorge in eastern Oregon. And we start feeding off of part of this. So we think we'll be clear. This would be Sunday morning with a light east wind flow. And that would set up the first, I don't think so in, in downtown Portland, but the first fairly widespread freeze across much of the valley and up through Clark and Cowlitz counties that we've seen, you know, so far this fall season, right? So keep your eye on that, especially if you're a gardener and you have some things you're trying to hold on to a little bit. Uh, now back to today, this is what we saw yesterday. This fetch of clouds and the upper level flow just kind of streaming in. That's still going on. Radar right now picking up some showers offshore. Absolutely expecting a little bit of light rain at times up around Astoria and the Long Beach Peninsula. And like yesterday, everybody here uh, on the west side at least has a chance to see one of those kind of brief spritzy light showers. 47 Salem right now, 48 Kelso, 50 in Portland. It's also 50 in Baker City. Signs that we do have cloud cover really across a good portion of our state this morning. So our seven day forecast, 61 today, 
cloudy skies, that shower chance. Sun and scattered showers tomorrow. Notice how we get colder. Only mid 50s tomorrow. In fact, today could be the final 60 degree day of the week. Wow. <laughs> All right, done. <laughs> Feeny, thank you. How's this for a motto, Drew? For the students, by the students. That's the purpose behind a new tutoring service right here in the metro area. This uh, service actually has a pretty simple name, Brenda. It's called Students Tutor Students. Pretty self-explanatory, right? <laughs> it's meant to help kids get help from other kids during distance learning. So we're gonna show you exactly how this program works and how kids can get involved. Plus, do you prefer gas or electric? That simple decision could determine the air quality in your home. We're gonna pass along some tips to improve it and prevent any trouble in the future.